And let's talk about this blog post in this video where we discuss about Worsen's build infrastructure. And if you have used any sort of framework, Next.js, React, anything and if you ever search how do you deploy it online you would have come across Worsel as a product so when we talk about platforms like Worsel, they have a lot of responsibility from hosting to also deploying so they also offer ci as a service right continuous integration so internally Hive is Worsel's low-level, untrusted, and informal compute platform designed to give us control needed to securely, efficiently manage the run builds. So before getting into this blog post, I just want to set some context, right? Right. So how, how things actually work is that you, let's say you have your code base, right? Which is what you are writing on your system. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do something like get push origin master. Right, you're going to take it to GitHub. So this is your GitHub server or any sort of Git server. Then Wurzel, what it will do, Wurzel would have registered a webhook with GitHub. If you had installed like the Wurzel app, if you have ever seen that Wurzel asks you to link your GitHub repository, that linking basically is installing a webhook, right? So what a webhook is basically is, is that the moment you push on this, GitHub will inform Wurzel that a push has happened, right? So GitHub will send an HTTP request to Wurzel and then Wurzel will start whatever it wants to do in this case it will clone this repository clone the repo and start the build right so it will start this build now in order to build this what it's doing is that it's cloning your repository which is on github and it's running it inside some compute environment right so this compute is owned by Wurzel, right that's why it says that it is a untrusted and a formal compute platform because of two things the first thing is that Wurzel does not know what the hell you have written in your repository is it malware is it some virus is it like some shell code anything could be there right so it has to be an un it has to be considered as an untrusted thing and it is also a formal because once this build is complete once the deployment and all of this is ready so once the deployment is done, you just simply destroy the compute, right? Now, since November 2023, Hive has powered Wurzel's build, enabling key improvements like enhanced build machines and a 30% improvement in build performance. So see, the fundamental architecture is this only, that it takes uh, your source code from GitHub, it somehow manages to create a compute instance, runs it over here and then destroys it. I can, by the way, give you a live example of the same thing. They are calling it Hive. We don't call it internally anything. But Code Dump Playgrounds is a very good example of an formal compute instance, which is for untrusted code, right? So you see over here, the moment I start this React.js playground, what you're going to see is that we are also spinning up an instance within less than five seconds. This instance is a formal because when you go away, it will terminate after some time. It is also for untrusted computer because we don't really know what you would write here, right? At least in case of Wurzel, the interaction is like non-interactive, right? You can't just write commands in CI. Over here, it's even more of a problematic thing because you can write like real Linux commands. So these sort of environments exist. Most of them, like for example, are used in CI cases, but a lot of them, for example, for, for play code damn playgrounds, they are also used for compute cases. This similar thing we do at Fermion also. So for example, if you are creating a website where you want to teach coding related content or programming related content, if you have an academy or something and you want to embed these coding labs, then these environments are also similar to what CodeDAM has. Basically, they are the exact environments with the sandboxing and everything controlled by us so that the end user doesn't compromise the infrastructure, right? If they are running some sort of malicious code. So let's take a look at what Hive is and how it operates. First of all, Hive is a cluster running in a specific region. There can be multiple Hives per region designed to be efficiently manage and execute customer builds. It's made up of several key components that work together to handle everything from code execution to scaling. So Hive is a top level primitive in the system. We run multiple Hives and each has its own failure boundary operating independently from other. Box refers to the bare metal machines inside of the virtual machine inside Hive. So Wurzel uses bare metal for CI. At the bare metal, Wurzel has introduced several optimizations, including Docker caching and a few more things. Cell is what we call a virtual machine. Inside cell, we run at least one container. Each cell is designed, assigned dedicated CPU and memory, while disk and network throughput are rate limited based on the overall capacity and how the box is divided up. Let me tell you how this basically operates, like what they are saying on a diagrammatic level. Let's say this is Earth. Now they are saying that they have a lot of hives in many regions, right? They run multiple hives and in many, many regions. So imagine that they have all of these hives somewhere on the planet, right? in different different location depending on like where they have created bare metal servers so now what they are saying is that inside a single hive let's say this is a hive 
you have bare metals right bare metal machine and bare metal if you don't know what bare metal is it's like an actual real computer without any sort of virtualization on top of it like right so you just create you just buy hardware right so all of you have your own laptops right so your laptop is you can think of it as a bare metal machine because it's like actually you have access to the metal right but in a lot of cases when you use AWS or any other providers what they do is they give you a very small part of compute which is not bare metal so that's where the virtual machine comes from the VM angle so all of these are bare metal machines there could be many according to them and then inside a bare metal machine they now run many virtual machines right so they're saying at least one what was that uh, at least one container i think cell is what we call a virtual machine inside each cell we run at least one container right so all of these inside a bare metal machine are cell and each of the cell now further has containers right so your actual workload that gets executed is inside this container right so this is this is what you get as an access as a developer a container inside a cell inside a bare metal machine inside a hive right four level abstractions and then finally they have a control plane which orchestrates the cluster managing job placements handling auto scaling and all of that so there would be an independent component or maybe like one of the cells is responsible for that i don't think they have talked a bit more about this yeah so it's an independent component within the hive itself the control plane right so what usually happens in cases like this is that if this is a control plane what effectively would happen is that versal's apis will contact with the control plane inside the hive and then that control pane that control plane is responsible for managing these cells and containers right cells being the virtual machines and container being the being the containers inside those machines and then you also have an each hive has its own api which is minimal by design the api primarily handles requests to run cells so see over here hive is an abstraction it's a concept right inside that you have bare metal machines and then cells and then containers and these bare metal machines run on kvm which is a full virtualization solution for linux on x86 hardware on kvm you use firecracker which is also one of the very interesting technologies firecracker is built by amazon aws and lambdas aws lambdas uses firecrackers so aws created it for its own use case lambdas and firegate but it is so good that they also have made it available open source and this is also something which we use at codedam and fermion and versal by the way also uses it now for its hive architecture we use firecracker for some of the machines we are still transitioning the load fully to firecracker we haven't rolled out like a hundred percent version so moving on in the blog post you can see that on kvm which is a virtualization layer for the x86 hardware you have firecracker processes and i'm assuming these firecracker processes are the actual virtual machines so these are the cells firecracker is an open source virtualization technology built for creating and managing secure all of this in hive these micro vms are called cells each cell is mapped directly to a firecracker process this one-to-one -one relationship ensures that each vm is fully managed by its corresponding firecracker process so maybe like they're not exactly calling a cell a firecracker instance because but they have like a one-on-one -on -one relation with firecracker and cell managing this complex orchestration is a box daemon that runs on each box so over here you can see this is the architecture where box daemon manages all the cells firecracker is linked with one-on-one -on -one with every single cell so looking at life of a build basically like what happens when you start building when you do a git push and when it starts is that the build pipeline selects the appropriate hive cluster first of all based on the customer and build configuration it uses the hive api to run the build inside a container within a cell right so again the abstraction layers which we have talked about while hive is responsible for running and scaling the containers execution it doesn't manage each containers internals the build pipeline which uses hive api provides the build container image ready to execute the build so i mean this blog post is basically it they have said like they have improved a lot in terms of performance and all but i don't exactly know what they were using earlier because they never mentioned like how is this better 20 percent of what what was the previous solution because effectively you would have something like this only some level of container orchestration even if you are using sort of your own ci unless i mean like spinning up your whole our whole virtual machine is extremely slow this is also one of the reasons we are able to do something like this where codedam.com playground works within a few seconds is that because the moment i click on this over here you see this getting your dedicated container is just simply attaching the compute owned by codedam in this case it's just attaching to one of the containers which we have inside our our sort of 
bare metal, right? Which is not bare metal exactly. For our use case, it's normal EC2s for now, but this might as well be just bare metal. What we don't have on code dam is a concept of this hive, right? So our bare metals are like independently distributed here and there in the world, sort of like Cloudflare. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I won't, I would say like it's not a very deep dive into the technicalities of blog posts uh, like I am usually uh, used to when looking at Cloudflare and all. But overall, I think it's a, it's a good enough blog post that if you don't know about how CI structures or these formal and unsecured computes usually work, you would have learned a few couple of new words like firecracker and virtualization and all of that. So that's all for this one. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video really soon.